Welcome to Very Interesting. We're launching the season with the Camel Camels, Coach Fowler, Coach Stroop, and all the players from the Camel Camels, 2021 state champs. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Blake Belcher and I'm a senior at Campbell High School and I played backup point guard for our team this year. My name is Riley Vinson and I'm a junior and I play guard. My name is Skylar Morrison, I am a senior and I play guard. My name is Caden Siebert, I'm a senior at Campbell High School and uh, I play guard. My name is Carlos Camargo, I'm a senior at Campbell High School, I play forward. I'm Joey Barnett. I'm in 12th grade and I play guard for the Campbell Camels. I'm Sam Bunting, I'm a freshman at Campbell and I'm a guard. Hi, I'm Gavin Biggs and uh, I'm a senior at Campbell High School and I play center for Campbell. Hey, I'm Cole Townsend, I'm a sophomore and I play guard for Campbell. My name is Colton Hurt and uh, I'm a junior and I played small forward for the Campbell basketball team. Hi, I'm Dakota Dodd, uh, I'm a senior and I played point guard. I'm Charlie Parker. I'm a senior at Campbell, and I pretty much play every position. Uh, my name is Blake Fowler. I am a senior at Campbell High School, and I play the guard position from point guard to shooting guard. My name is Cody Carroll. I'm a manager on the team. I'm a sophomore at CHS. I would like to welcome newly minted state champs, Charlie Parker and Blake Fowler to the show today. Welcome guys. Thank you, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Good Charlie, to be here. thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. So do y'all know what this means to the community, Campbell, the area, Southeast Missouri, y'all brought home a state championship. Charlie, how do you feel about that? It's awesome, so much support behind us, it's unbelievable. Blake, what does it mean it's, to you? It's crazy because we, before this year, we haven't even really won a, a district in men's sports. And it's, it's crazy that we brought the community alive again. It, was, it felt like it was like a new place when we, when we came back into town after winning the state championship. It was just a, it was a, it was a crazy feeling. You know, it's really funny, like whenever you play basketball in Southeast Missouri, you know, there's such a big tradition and everybody's fighting against each other throughout the year. But once the Southeast Missouri team gets in the championship or the sectionals, everybody becomes a fan of that team. So all of Southeast Missouri was rooting for you and you brought it home. But with success becomes your individual awards. And just recently, I think yesterday, you got named to be all state, Charlie, for the first time, correct? Yes, sir. How's that make you feel? It's crazy. I mean, I never really thought I'd be all state. Baseball's always been my main sport. And I just worked hard all summer, grew, got bigger, and just had a little bit of success this year. Now, Blake, this will be your third time you won All-State, correct? Yes, sir. So it's, you're an old pro. I can tell you're cool as a cucumber. It, it means a lot to you, but I mean, you've been here before, right? Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's definitely still, it's still an honor, but it's, it's been third, third time. I remember when you, you two guys played in DPR at Dex, Dexter, and you were very dominant then. And Charlie's dad, he had all these hand signals and he was really coaching you up. Well, Chad, those signals and coaching paid off. So Charlie, <laughs> Charlie's sitting here a state champion, right? Yes, sir. But I'm sure your mom thinks that the athletic ability come from her side, right? The Buntings. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. And you had a cousin that played on the team. So how did that affect the family? Because it, it was a high time at the family, right? Good time. Yes, sir. It was awesome. I mean, we've all wanted or everybody's wanted me and him to play together since we were young and we finally got to. And then the state championship game, we all thought this was cool that I made the first point and then he made the last three points. That's right, he had a three-pointer, right? Yes, sir. So there's big expectations out of Sam coming up, isn't there? Yes, sir. So Blake, you've been at this for a long time. 
you pushed yourself. I mean, hard work, determination pays off. Like I said, I remember you being dominant in fifth and sixth grade at DPR. Like I said, you're cool as a cucumber. Um, what does it really mean to finally get over the hump? You know, you've got all these individual awards and um, hard work, determination, persistence pays off. What does it mean to finally get that state championship? Well, it, it means so much to me because these past few years, we, we weren't able to get the job done. Freshmen, we were, we were real young. And sophomores, we got knocked out in the semis of the district tournament. And then junior year, we got bounced in the first round. And nobody, I mean, our family and, of course, community was always behind us. But nobody around really thought we would ever make over the hump because of the, the Campbell curse. No one's ever won a district. No one's ever really got over that hump. But once we got over the district hump, it was just the train just kept moving. I didn't know there was a Campbell curse. Yeah, it was, I heard of it. Yeah, it was a Campbell curse. So what does it mean to, to like your mom? I mean, your dad's coach of the year, 2A, for the whole state of Missouri. I mean, that's a big, big honor. And you're all state for the third time. You won the state championship. What's the what's the mood around your house? How, what your mom, like she probably can't believe it right now, right? It's 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 wild because she she couldn't eat, she couldn't even believe it because him two, he we're both in the same household. He's coach of the year and I was player of the year, so it re, it's really crazy to have both of those accomplishments in one home, and it's just it's been really crazy between all of us. And I'm sure your mom's a big part of y'all's success. Oh, because, for sure. Uh, I'm sure she's been a big support for you, both of y'all. For sure. She's always been there for both of us and the team especially. If we needed food, any drinks or anything, she was always there to be there for us. And she would, yeah, all the parents were, uh, obviously, but she was always there for me especially. Sounds like she's the real celebrity of the household. Uh, for sure. Yes, sir. Well, Charlie, uh, what does it mean to you or what was the turning point in the season for you, you said? Wow, we're really good. Turning point was probably when we went on the 18-game win streak. We lost to Charleston at the start of the year, and then we just improved a ton over the season. And then I knew we were good, but then once we came back from down 20 against Alton in the sectional game, I knew we had a pretty good chance. So, Blake, what about you? What was the turning point when you said, which you have no fear, I can tell. You don't care if they're seven foot tall or five mm -hmm. foot tall or quicker or faster than you. You have no fear. So at what point in time did you realize that I'm just as good or better than anybody on the court and we're going to bring the state championship home? Well, I think uh, when, once we went on that winning streak, uh, it was put to a halt. I forgot who, who beat us. But uh, after that, after we had won those so many games, I knew we were really tough this year. And then we went on to win the district. And after we won the district, I knew we were that team because we had just broke the Campbell curse and first time in history, and I knew that we were – one of the best teams to ever walk through Campbell. Charlie, what's in store for you in the future? You're a senior, you're getting ready to graduate, you're a local celebrity, you're probably going around signing autographs at Los Brises. So what's in store for you next year? Next year, I'm going to John Wood Community College in Quincy, Illinois to play baseball. And then after that, I'm planning on hopefully going to a bigger college and continuing my baseball career. Blake, what's in store for you in the future? Oh, I plan on playing college basketball. Uh, I'm not really sure where yet, but uh, I'm just waiting for the right team, the right time to come. And I'm really leaning towards going to a JUCO and then hopefully expanding my career by going to a bigger college to finish playing sports. Blake, if a team doesn't pick you quick, you're just going to leave them behind because you're a winner. Uh, um, you're determined. I mean – Whatever team you decide to play with, they're going to be a, the luckiest team and wherever they are. <laughs> Thank so you. I want to wish both of y'all good luck. Thank you for coming on the show today. And wow, Camel Camel, state champ. Can you can you believe it? Yeah, I mean, it's starting to settle in now. Still crazy. Still Congratulations. Crazy. Thank you. Job well done. Thanks Thank you, sir. Me. Thank you for having us. Since I have a cousin on the team, Charlie Parker, it just made it more special to be able to play with him and then – for our family and just us playing together. What makes this team special is that we're all a family and we're all one. Uh, ever since we were in the third grade, we've always been uh, on the same team, played on the same basketball team. We've been everywhere together, hang out all the time. And uh, there's nothing that can really break anything that we have. Like it's a big bond and it's always probably gonna be there. With the COVID restrictions, coach had us practicing so much, we didn't have time to get sick. I'm thrilled today to have the Brain Trust, the architects of the Campbell State Champions, Coach 
Stroop and Coach Fowler, welcome to the show. Thanks Good for coming. Man. Thank you for having us. My pleasure. You guys have created a lot of excitement here in Southeast Missouri. The whole area has been backing you ever since you got past all the locals. I mean, do y'all feel that support with the team? Because once you leave this area, you know, the whole area supports that team that goes to state. And y'all brought that state championship home. So tell us a little bit about that, Coach. Uh, it's just been unbelievable as far as the support we've got from all the other communities. I mean, our, our, our community has been, been huge. I mean, they come out and supported us, but I've been getting text messages, phone calls. Uh, we've been getting money donations uh, from other communities, uh, just, you know, trying to push us along to, you know, bring that first place plaque back down to the boot hill. So it's been, it's been an unbelievable experience for us. Well, success breeds success, so there's a lot of pressure to keep going, but... When the team wins the state championship, that actually makes that program better for years to come usually. So how do you feel about that pressure? Well, I, as far as making the program better, I mean, it's the, the uh, elementary kids are just eating it up. I mean, uh, you can drive through town. Uh, my wife came home the other day. She said, hey, I just drove through town. It was, it was after dark. She said uh, there was uh, two goals pulled in the streets and they had makeshift lights out and they were playing <laughs> basketball. And, and, it just it just breeds excitement it amongst does. amongst your uh, girls and your boys and uh, and it just uh, it's going to be good. I think it's going to really help benefit our program for years to come. And this is the first state championship in the Camel Camels history, correct? Correct. What a feat! Yep. Congratulations. Thank you, Coach Stroop. How does it feel? You've been at Campbell for ten years. You've been assistant coach for four years. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be part of the brain trust and the architect of a state championship? Oh, it's it's awesome. It's the it's the ultimate honor to be a part of it, to be around the kids, to be around the whole system and see it mature as it's went through. It's been absolutely great, fantastic. Well, y'all been at this a long time, and there, you know there's many, many people, players, coaches that never win a state championship. So I'm in awe of it because y'all really dedicated yourself to hitting this hitting this mark. It's amazing, and with that success, you become the just yesterday was named Class Two A Coach of the Year for the whole state. Yes, sir. And uh, it's, a, it's a great honor. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, along with winning, I mean, obviously you win a state championship, uh, you, you know, probably going to get a few accolades. But uh, like I've said all along, I mean, whenever you have really good players, they make coaches look good. So we've got really good players. We've got a good basketball team and those guys make me look really well. So. People in the area get tired of seeing the same old teams win it every year. So it's Campbell's time. The Campbell curse is over, right, Coach Drew? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's been uh, a long time coming. I mean, I'm not saying that when you were little kids, you knew they were going to win a state championship someday, but they've gotten better every single year. I mean, they've, it's, they, and they've worked so hard for it. And to see them rewarded in the end is, it's, it's the ultimate uh, reward for me to watch it and to be a part of it and to see, you know, it, it, how it brings the community together. And like you said, the whole, how Southeast Missouri is cheering mm -hmm. us on. What made this team special? What makes it special is, in, is the family aspect of it. This is, I mean, it's not a team, it's a family. They, everybody knows everybody's weaknesses. They know their strengths. They know their roles. They've known it. They've knew each other for so long. It's just, it's, it's, it's a family atmosphere. The, the, I didn't want to see it end even on a state championship. To me, it was too soon. It, it, was, it, it was bittersweet. You just wanted to play some more games. I right? was, <laughs> and, and I still am. At this point, I'm not ready to, to let this go. But you, we couldn't have did anything better. They played every single game that they had given put, put in front of them their senior year. And, and it makes that team special. They, we played this season like every game was their last game of their career, even the first game. And they were reminded of that every single game, to play it like it's your last. And those guys took it to heart. And they never give up because they were down in most of the most of the last three or four games, right? Mm -hmm. They they battled back. They did, they knew it could be their last game, and they played like it. And it was it was awesome. Coach Feller, how long have these kids been playing together? Because this is quite a story within itself. Well, uh, traveling and playing together since third grade. We've got them together earlier than that when they was younger, uh, even when back in second grade, and we you know doing skill work with them and getting them in the gym, dribbling the basketball. But as far as just going and playing, we started traveling with this bunch of kids in third grade. I mean, we traveled uh, and played some, you know, some school ball, if we can find uh, school teams around that would play us at that age. 
we'd play school ball at that age, but we would just, we'd pack them up and we'd go to Farmington, we'd go to Jonesboro, we'd go to St. Louis, we'd go, I mean, we'd just travel all over the place. And uh, so these guys have played a ton of basketball and they play, played a ton of basketball together. Well, I don't want to single each and every player out because they were all important to your team, but it looked like to me, everybody knew what their role was. Like, it looked like to me, Camargo brought his lunchbox to the last three or four games and he really got on the boards and he really, really come through for the team in the end. Uh, he, he played big in Springfield. I mean, the semifinal game, I think he ended up with a double-double, 11 points, 13 rebounds, and he guards. He can really get out and guard, and, and he can guard out on the perimeter. And, uh, yeah, he, he brought it, uh, and he brought it every day. And uh, just like every one of those kids, I mean, those kids brought it every single day in practice. You know, in the past, you have groups that are not really good practice teams. And uh, in the past, even this bunch, as, you know, there'd be days where, you know, practice, it was kind of, you know, it was, it was a grind. This year, them guys showed up every day. They knew what our goals were. They knew why we was there, and they showed up every single day. And uh, man, I mean, there was days I'd have to back them down a little bit from each other because we was just so competitive with each other. And uh, when you can be competitive with your brother and you can really go after him when it's time to go, go, go get somebody else, they're ready to go. Coach Stroop, at what point in the season did you think Wow, we're really good. We may win the state championship. Well, we did go on an 18-0 streak. We played Charleston close, first game of the year. Yeah, and I heard you say your only losses were on Saturday. On Saturday, so luckily we didn't have a whole lot of Saturdays that we played on. We 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 went on a good run. It was pretty impressive as far as that goes because our schedule is really, really tough. We're, I'd put it up against any class two in the state, what we played. A lot of teams are bigger than us. When we went on the run there late, we went 18-0 you know, and we played Sykeston. And I know Sykeston beat us by three, but to take a little, you know, Campbell into Sykeston, never played them before in that big field house mm -hmm. and, and play them close. And it, it was impressive to me. I mean, I, I knew at that point that, wow, we can play, we can play with some, you know, if you can play with a big school like Sykeston, with the history that they have and the success they have and how well the coach and how well they, they have their program going and we can at least compete with it. I like our chances in classes our size. And that's when it kind of got my attention and I thought, wow, we could, you know, we're pretty good here. This is, you know, we just got to keep it going. We got to work. And, you know, we, we took a loss to Sykes and it, and it snapped the 18 game streak. And then that monkey's off your back. And, and I, well, let's just do another streak. And that, it was, it was a, a, a eye opening experience to me to, to be able to play Sykeston and the rules that big and to realize, wow, we can, we can play with the big boys. We, we'll be okay. So coach Feller, he brings up a good point. This is probably the toughest schedule in Campbell Campbell's history. Was that strategic? Was that because of COVID? It just worked out that way? Was it luck? Or was that some strategy that you wanted to pay, play stiffer competition? Well, we knew uh, with this group coming in uh, several years ago, it's, uh, we got out of the track town and got in the Boot Hill Conference. In the Boot Hill Conference, you're going to have uh, you know athletic teams, bigger, stronger, faster than, than, than what we are on most years. And uh, so we, you know, we got into a, a, you know, a little bit better athletic conference as far as just being able to see athletes, stronger kids, and that kind of thing. But with that being said, uh, we also went on our non-conference schedule, and we we picked up. Uh, I mean, we picked up Charleston, we picked up Sykeston. Uh, uh, as the year went on, we ended up picking up uh, Cape Notre Dame down the stretch, Scott City, and uh, so uh, the schedule was we strengthened it up because we knew what we had coming through. So we wanted to play a super tough schedule. But also as the season went on with, with, uh, with the snow that we got, we got all the ice mm -hmm. and the snow there. Uh, there were some things that changed in our schedule. And I had opportunities to jump, uh, you know, to jump at playing some of those, some of the bigger guys that I, I think we picked up Scott City and Notre Dame and, uh, and we was gonna play them because we knew down the stretch, if you get into the district tournament, you know, you end up playing some of those schools that it's gonna help us. Who did you really think your toughest competitor would be when you get into the districts and sectionals and all that? Oh, uh, well, we was focused in on winning the district because we've never won one. So we knew going in and we drew South Pim in the first round. And we knew South Pim uh, is a very, very good basketball team. We got them pretty good the first time we played them. Uh, then we played them in the conference tournament. And uh, I think we ended up beating them by about 13, 15, somewhere in there. And uh, we jumped on them early in that game and just managed to hold a lead throughout that game. And so uh, you play a good team three times, it, it tends to make you a little bit nervous. And so we knew we had to get through that semifinal game. We got a bye in the first round. And, uh, and uh, our kids, I think, was a little uptight coming into that game, uh, you know, with the, kind of the monkey on our back type thing. We have to try to, you know, 
get through this, uh, you know, South Penn, who's a very good basketball team, and then we run into Bernie after we got through South Penn, and, uh, you know, Bernie's traditionally always going to be good. Mm-hmm. They they got a really good basketball program, so we knew what we was uh, running up against with Bernie. We played them once early in the season in the finals of, a, of our tournament, and uh, so uh, our focus at that point was, hey, w- we got to take care of uh, business one game at a time. Well, I've heard this story several times, but I want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth about you took you took this team to the Final Four a year or two ago, mm-hmm. and you kind of set the gauntlet down. This is our goal, guys, to get right back here as state champions. So tell us a little bit about that story. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I guess when this bunch, when our seniors was uh, at the end of their sophomore year, uh, we had a good year. We won 18 games, playing a really tough schedule. We got to the semifinals of uh, – the uh, district tournament, we got beat by Portageville. It was a really close game. It might have been three or four points. It was, I mean, it was right down to the wire. And Portageville clipped us. And Portageville ended up going, uh, I think it was to the sectional. Uh, I know they got to the sectional. I'm not sure if they, yeah, they did. They got to the quarterfinal, got beat by Oran. You know, we thought, man, you know, we, we got a really good chance, you know, here in the next couple of years to do something special. So um, I told those guys, I said, hey, look, hey, pack your bags. We're going to Springfield. We're going to go watch this Final Four. And we took them across and we took them over there and we watched, watched all the games. We watched every game that we could, you know. Uh, and they knew at the end of the day, I, I, we got ready to leave. We, you know, talking all with, with all the guys. And I said, guys, this year we're, we're coming over. I said, but the next time we come over, we're bringing uniforms. We're going to come over here to play. And that was, that's been our goal. And that's been in the back of their, those guys' mind. And so every time that they step on the floor, they knew, hey, this is why we're here. And they took it to heart, and, man, they just went to work and got it done. Well, Coach Stroop, Coach Fowler's all business, I can tell. I like this guy. He's all business. And it's been a lifelong journey for him, his business, the business of basketball. And uh, you have made this area proud. I was talking to Jeremy Siebert by text, and I was like, I bet you it's just as, as, just as exciting for the parents as it is for the players because many of the parents played sports and never won a state championship. So – Tell us a little bit about the parents, how uh, they reacted. Hey, it's family. I mean, back to family again. Those parents are just as much as part of the team as everything else. They, they, they do. They go bend over backwards for the team and to support their players to make sure they're at practice or or whatever the team needs. They're there, they're bringing food. They're willing to drive or you know schedule a game an hour and a half away. They'll, hey, they're ready to go. It's if, with the parental support like that, it, you can do anything. It's not an obstacle. Nothing you have to fight. They're, they're with us all the way. They're our biggest fans. We're, we're great to have them. It's, it's been an honor to, to be a part of it and to, to see success of their kids. And uh, they're a big part of this. Uh, that gets left out a lot of times, I think, by a lot of people a lot of, in the communities, how much the parents go through. Because these guys have been playing when, since they're so little. That's a lot of travel time that these parents have put in to get their kids there and to put money up to buy the things that they need to, to do that. So. Yeah, the parents get an absolute, you know, has a part in this. It's a, it's a great role, and I'm, I'm glad they were so supportive because, you know, we, we absolutely thank them for being a part of it. Uh, I just think, uh, you know, with us being a tight-knit group of people and, and friends uh, that everybody wanted to see, you know, the potential that these kids had, want to see it play out. Great point, Coach. And, Coach, I mean, you got to have faith, right? Absolutely. When you were 20 points down, I got a feeling that you – you two never thought you were going to lose that game. So you're oh, tw- hey, when we went into that game at halftime, and, and coach was 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 doing his thing and he was going at him. But Caden Siever makes the comment, "I'm not done tonight. This is my senior year, and this is not how this is going to end." And we always had a, somebody that would you know, it may be different people at different times that would step up and be that guy that would you know take become a team leader all of a sudden. And and in that game in particular, he's like, "I'm not done." You guys, we're not done here. We're down by 20, but we were going to win this. I mean, you want to talk about making me feel so much better. Like, I mean, your coaches wasn't saying this anymore. We were trying to, you know, X and O, and this is how you're going to get back in it. And it got, you know, when he said that, I, he made me feel better because I thought, hey, these other guys are going to pick up on his determination with that. And they did. In the second half, it was a totally different ball game. You could just feel the momentum change. And it changed in that locker room when they – made up their mind that they were not done playing that night. And that's a key part to y'all's story. There's so many stories like that that motivated the team or turned the team around in the season. I mean, 
I could ask you what the turning point of the season was, but there's so many, right? Yeah, there's so many, yeah. Huge, huge moments throughout the whole, whole season. It's just hard to put a finger on any of it. But uh, like Coach, I mean, just alluded to, we, we had uh, we had guys that, that stepped in, and we're senior heavy. We got nine seniors on our basketball team. So, I mean, they were just, you know, didn't want to lose and didn't want to go home, didn't, didn't want to put the uniforms up. And uh, whenever you have a group of guys that has that kind of uh, – you know, determination to say, hey, you know, we're not going to go home tonight. And uh, Caden, you know, Caden was big with that. We had other guys that would come to the huddle. You know, we'd be getting ready. I'd be getting ready to talk to them. And, I, and all I would hear is, you know, guys yelling at each other like, hey, you need to pick it up because we're not done. We're not going home tonight. And whenever you get that kind of leadership from the top and you expect that from seniors because, you know, you know, by now you should, you know, we've matured over the course of the last several years. And it just all come together this year. You know, you mentioned turning points. Seabert, he may be a motivational speaker in the future, sounds like. He's good at it, yeah, and experience now. But like I said, there's so many turning points in the season. Was there ever – I know you didn't have any doubts, but most fans probably did. Was there ever any doubts once you got going into playoffs and everything? Was there any doubts you wasn't going to win the state championship? Uh, as far as for me, uh, I, I knew the potential that our, that our group had. And uh, I think that we, we was playing really well in the middle of our season, right through our conference season into our conference tournament, playing really well. I mean, I almost I think we probably peaked then, just playing really well now that we can step back and look back at the course of the season. Uh, but, yeah, uh, our, our kids just every night just brought it, every night just come to compete. And uh, I knew, go, you know, going into the district tournament, you know, that it was going to be a hurdle to get through that district tournament. Just, you know, just the – the mentality, the psyche, this, hey, you know, we got to get this, like people's refer to, the monkey off of our back, the pressure. And after we beat South Penn, it was like uh, you could just see the pressure release. Before that South Penn game, I can see so much pressure on our kids because they knew that, hey, we have to get this done tonight. And I think we played that South Penn game to not lose instead of playing the game to win it. And you can really see it all over our kids. And after we got through that game, you can just see like a weight just lifted off of those guys and going into the Bernie game. And I told him uh, before the game, uh, you know, the way our kids acted on the bus, the way those guys was, was reacting in the locker room, I knew our kids was ready to play basketball that night. And once we got through Bernie, I, I knew, hey, these guys are, they're, they're locked in on, on our goals, on our end goal. And they see the reality that this can happen. And, and they jumped on it and went and got it. Well, I think you were a big part of that. You've made great young men out of them. I've got to spend a little time with them behind the scenes here. And Coach Stroop, that's one thing that I can say about all the players. They're, they're first-class people, and I think that's a testament to both of you. But I can tell they love their head coach. Tell, oh, us, sure. tell us a little bit about that relationship. Sure. That, I mean, this is, you know, uh, this is the Coach Fowler's team. Going to come in as assistant, I'm well aware of that. Uh, I've voiced my opinion to him when we agree and when we disagree and everything, but, I, you know, it's his team. It's been his team for years. He called the shots. He, I knew he knew what he was doing, had total faith in him and, and the kids, and I knew what, what their goals was. And, you know, it was, it's really, really interesting because, like he said, it, you know, it's, it's, those are his kids, you know, and we feel that way. It's, a, it's, it's, it's really a cool, kind of an interesting thing. This was not just a put-together team spur of the moment. Though It was just so – you know, so much intertwined of, you know, kids hanging out with each other. You know, it's not just the basketball stuff. They go do stuff outside and, you know, stat, you, you couldn't come over Coach Fowler's house without one of the other players being there. So, and so they have this so unique uh, relationship amongst each other that, you know, it's just unbelievable and, and fun to watch. We've got a presentation we're going to make to the players, so uh, stay tuned. What really makes this team special is the amount of chemistry we've had for each other and the amount of love. We've played with each other from third grade up and we never really seem to go away from it. We continue to get better every year through some hardships, through just stuff that happened that we could have easily quit on. But with everyone involved, coaches, players, we never seem to quit. My favorite moment in the run to the state championship was uh, the South Pemiscot game in the uh, semifinal of districts. I don't think uh, last year or years before we would have won that game, but we grown so much maturity mentally as a team the whole season and throughout the off season that 
we were able to go down to win there in a battle. South Penn was a great team this year, and we just gutted out a comeback win. And I was proud of my guys after that game. Well, coach, team, we've got a special presentation for you guys today. Compliments of Ron and Pelissa Huber. Ron's our associate commissioner here in Dunklin County, does a great job. And Pelissa is a great school teacher because she's made one of my kids so smart. So, coach, compliments of Ron and Pelissa Huber. These beautiful basketballs, not as good as the trophy here, but really, really cool basketballs. Absolutely. And, and we would like to thank uh, Ron and Pelissa for all the basketballs for, for us and our kids. And uh, we'd also like to thank everybody who supported us throughout the year, uh, either with food, money, uh, just text messages. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone. Ron and Pelissa are big Camel Camel fans, so it's their honor to do this for them.